everyone. This is Dr. Bagley. Thank you for joining me. It's been a while. <laughs> I've been kind of busy uh, on a personal note. And yeah, it's cold outside, so that's why I'm freezing. <laughs> Here in Wisconsin, it's pretty cold. So today I want to take a break from the samurai, the code of the samurai, and I want to talk um, about relationship and the structure of meeting since you know, everyone probably knows that I'm starting uh, in a relationship with Jira, um, a good woman, and I just, and there's a couple of uh, comments that I has from my Facebook my Facebook friends, and so I wanted to um, have everyone come along because the comments and the compliments and the things that I did not realize was going on in the Facebook world. You guys are really watching me, and and I I really appreciate it. And so thank you very much. Today I want to give you a clinical position as a psychiatrist. As a psychiatrist, we focus mostly on the brains and the things within it and around it. And so today I want to give you three stages of where I am in with Jira, and also how to excuse me how to help within your own personal. Uh, dating position. Now, I know uh, for a lot of my Facebook friends, we're older and um, some of us are uh, married. This mostly is for the first stages of dating. So this, this video would actually be a good video for, uh, let's say, 12 and up uh, who are getting into uh, the relationship position. So the first thing I want to outline is there's three parts that I want to talk about in the brain. There is the, the little brain that keeps us surviving. This is the brain that says, if I meet you, if I see you, I want to uh, want to fight you. I want to run from you or I want to mate with you, meaning have sexual relations with you. So when you meet someone for the very first time in social media or you meet someone at the bar or the restaurant or the grocery store or at church or the temple or wherever, and you meet someone, that's the very first thought process within everyone's mind. I see you. Do I want to fight you? Do I want to run from you? Do I want to mate, for, mate with you? Okay. In stage one, that is the idea of all relationships and we need to understand this because there's a lot of confusion in in these um, processes when you meet someone for the first time yes there is what we call attraction that attraction just simply means I don't want to fight you I'm not in a position that I need to run from you and that mating position so when I see you there's a hormone which is the limbic system in your brain so there is the the little brain there's a limbic system that gives us our hormones our hormones is our feelings how I feel towards you all determines on how the hormone is expressed in your body so if I see you for the first time and I'm um, I have this hormone that I want to mate with you meaning that's a friendship that is a binding type hormone okay first stage you go to a bar you go to somewhere you meet someone that hormone says I mean that that thought process says I don't want to run fight you I want to mate with you first stage boom done second stage that hormone in both of the two people that hormone then is expressed what that simply means is you're going to have sexual relations, meaning everyone has a different timeline when that happens, but it happens. If you see someone, of course you want to have a sexual relations because after all, that is what we constitute the attraction. We can define what is constituting attraction in a different video, but just know all attraction is based on a hormone that wants us or leads us to want to have sex or to have a sexual relationship. In having sex, or let's say after having sex, ladies, I need to express this to you because it is hard for a man to express himself in this second stage after. The, the, 
the hardship of a man, and, and so let me define it in two parts. There is the guy who there is a fear that says he is only using me. And then there's a guy of after having sex that he wants to stay around. How do I know the difference between the two ladies? The two, the two difference is how they react after having sex. Meaning, the next day, let's assume it's a next day position. The next day, if he gets up and says, hey, nice time, had a great time, I'll call you later, that's a part-time guy. He's not serious with you. If the next day he gets up and says, hey, I want to cook you breakfast, hey, I want to have more time with you, that's a guy who is looking for a relationship, what we call relationship. The first guy is a guy who just simply want to have sex. That hormone that is in his body is very addicting. And so he's out on a look. He's trying to get a woman. He does and say whatever and anything he wants to say to get you, to hook you. And once he gets you, he has sex with you. And then he's out and looking for the next person. The other guy is quite different. In fact, he's very different. He has sex with you. Then he wakes up. Automatically, there's a different type of hormone that goes through his body. This hormone says, says to him that I want to be with you. I want to take care of you. I want to provide security. Okay. This kind of guy, his security is based off of your security. And that both of your basin off of the security is off of the kids position. If we have a child together or if we have kids, then our security is based off of needs. And the needs is the kids. And that is I need a home. I need food. I need water. That's the bare, bare minimum. And then we branch out from there. The other kind of guy the one who's addicted to the hormone of sexuality, he has what we call a sex addiction. And so he, when he wakes up from you, he is not serious to be with you. He is there out there. The other guy, when he wakes up, his hormone changes and he's all about providing that security, that home, that uh, food, that water for you and for the kids position the confusion ladies that I'm, I want to bring out between the two gentlemen and that is this if you have a guy who's just out there player player he will always look for the new thing if you have a guy who's all about now the new hormone about security there is never going to be a woman that would take him away from you. His hormone has changed from the sexuality hormone to now a providing as a man position, providing hormone. And that's the hormone that makes a guy go out and go to work and hunt and provide for his family. That hormone is automatic as soon as he wakes up after the mating process. He wakes up and there is not a woman out there sexually who can draw him sexually away from that security position of providing for his family. And that's one thing I really would love a lot of ladies uh, to understand about their guys. Um, and likewise, guys, it's all about security. They want a man who to provide and rightfully so they're women they're nurturers they're they have kids or want to have kids and they need that basic necessity of a house food water and so on we can branch out outside of that the key is ladies is to understand that as soon as a man decides in his mind which is the next part the neural neural cortex when he provides, when he puts it in his mind and he has that hormone in his body, he can never leave you 
for another woman of sexuality. The other guy will leave you definitely for sexuality, but the guy who says, I'm with you, I'm here to take care of you, the kids, he will never, it is almost next to impossible for him at this stage, almost next to impossible. So if a guy says, when he wakes up, I'm there, I want to provide, meaning I'll cook for you, let's go out, let's continue. He's starting to show that hormone of providing. Okay, that's stage two. Stage three is the next stage, neural cortex. That is the brain that keeps the story. That is that when you look at a picture of a brain, that, that neurons and all of those, that, that brain tissue, that is the story keeping. Okay, here's where it gets very interesting. You have two individuals from the time they were born to the age that they're at, they have what we call identity or identifier. They have their traumas, they have their, their bad experiences, they have their good experiences, they have their culture, they have their speech, their food, they have their ways of living socially. You have two individuals and their neural cortex uh, talks about your identity of who I am as an individual. The next stage after sex is now we want to, as a couple, I want to provide you want me to provide, we're providing for the sake of the family, kids, then we need to figure out, can our neural cortex, can our brains, can our identity of who I am combined with who you are? And this is where a lot of relationships, it takes time to take two individuals and make it one. That oneness is what we take or say two becomes one. Our purpose, our motive, our, our identity of togetherness is now there and we're growing into a family. I have my role as a provider. You have your role as a wanting me to provide as well as a provider. And collectively, we're on the same path, we're on the same motive, we have the same purpose, and that is later sealed by what we call marriage. Now, I'm not talking about later after the marriage, let's talk about the very beginning. In dating, when you go through your I want to mate position, in dating, after you find out, ladies, you have a guy who wants to provide for you. And guys, you know that you want to provide for this woman. And whatever she has, the next stage, the third stage, is taking two independent individuals. And how do we take all our trauma, all of our history, all of our cultures, everything we know as an individual... How do we bring them together? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. In relationships, what we call relationships, we call it dating. That dating process is stage three. Meaning, I now want to take who I am as an identifier you want to take who you are as an identifier, and we now want to see if we can take who we are and come together and come now as one. Have make new memories, make new experiences, make new bad times and good times, but we do it together new. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work because we're so focused on our history and not being able to give ourselves to the newness because of our history. And a lot of us, the older we get, 
the more we try to give ourselves to that relationship and just it just didn't work for whatever reason and that bad experience that bad part of the coming together is hard is hard because of our history in all relationships you have your good times because we have a good time we building that relations part in the beginning I want to mate with you let's have fun in that process we're mating let's have fun in that process now we need to build two individuals and build that together it's kind of hard to have fun in that process it's hard because you're two individuals unless you can put your history aside and come together and work it out together for a common goal for a common purpose so be careful on the beginning part of your relationship yes it's nice and yes it's fun do is it supposed to always be fun and nice no it can't be and the reason it can't be because you're an individual position you, you are a individual identity your neurocortex is been built since the time of your birth to now you've been built you have you you <laughs> and you have to now start all over you with someone else and you sort of kind of have to mm, bring some of who you are to the table and leave some behind because you are two individuals now trying to be one some of it you need to bring some of it you need to leave behind and that takes a lot of trust that takes a lot of time to do that takes a lot of everything and so all relationships starts off nice sometimes they end up badly may I suggest as an outsider looking in don't judge it we do not know in all cases your friends and your family members when they start a new relationship we do not know if the two individual who starts off when that third stage kick in can they bring and come together and become one if they can that's awesome if they can't then there's some issues that needs to be resolved and sometimes the issues can't be resolved because of history traumas bad experiences lack of trust and so on and so forth financial and so on so those are the three stages that I see as a psychiatrist in the dating and in context um, yes me and Jira we had a great time in the beginning it took a little time for us to get together we got together and now we're at a stage where we're trying to put our neurocortex as me as a doctor <laughs> layman's term we're trying to see if we two individuals we can work it out together in all relationships help it along give it the respect that it needs give it the space that it needs don't interrupt it don't be selfish to it friends right give it the two couples what they need to work it out together and then rearrange their lives to become one and then let's move forward it is so strong in this idea that even biblically it says that when a man marries a woman if he's in the army he cannot go to war for the first year of that marriage a relationship needs to be excluded from outsiders friends and family members when they come together because it is a very delicate position of two individuals two power heads if you will and, and the reason I say power heads because the older we get we get stuck in our ways 
but two power heads coming together is very delicate and if we if we me and Jerry Ajira and you you and your relations don't get it right it won't work it has some great possibilities all relationship does but if you don't get it right it won't work so as a friend to my friends give it space i let my friends have space they have a couple they getting into a relationship i'm not going to bother them let them be i'm not selfish like that my friends and my family members i realize it's hard for two individuals coming together in the nor cortex position and so you have to let it let them do if they come to me as a psychiatrist and they just seem to can't figure it out they want to stay together but they my job is to help them get from one level to the next that's it walk away and as a friend give it the good advice it needs then walk away and let it be <sighs> relationships are hard but the reward if when two people can come together it is a beautiful thing in my eyes at least <laughs> so I just wanted to give my two cents in um, because of what uh, has been told to me and I am very happy that a lot of you are really still trying to find the right one in your life what is the right one I don't know who knows I guess pretty much the one that two people can come together and build new relations new neurons called memories anyway so I wish you well thank you for your time this is Dr. Bagley three stages uh, do I need to run fight you mate second stage let's mate addicting sexuality sexual tendencies they will leave you every single time dedicated hormone will kick in for those who decide to stay I'm going to provide the security a man will say I need your security a woman will say it is based on the home the food the water kids relations third stage is in dating what we call dating two individuals two powerhouses coming together seeing if they can merge their identities together to then move forward with a purpose a a goal in life and we call it sealed with marriage but ultimately we call it uh, building new memories the neurocortex position if you have any questions any comments or concerns please by all means let me know I'll be more than happy to help you guys out as much as I can and if nothing else have a great Monday it's cold drink some hot tea coffee water whatever <laughs> have a great day everyone until next time bye bye